Hey guys, what's going on? Jeb here, and in today's video, we are going to be discussing whether or not Bitcoin is in a position to break the strongest level of resistance that we have seen on this chart in the last three years. You think I'm kidding, but I'm not. The downtrend of resistance that Bitcoin has been below ever since all-time high in late 2017, I would say is the strongest level of resistance that Bitcoin sees. And it's funny because the last couple of days I've actually seen Bitcoin put a bounce in and we're now rallying back up to that downtrending level. So in this video, we're going to be discussing the recent bounce that we've seen on Bitcoin over the last 24 hours or so, and we're going to be coming to a conclusion in this video about whether or not the 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 72nd time the Bitcoin test this downtrend of resistance in the last month because we've tested it quite a few times We're gonna be finding out if this is going to be the time that we are finally going to break it guys You're gonna learn a lot from this video and I'm very much looking forward to this video So if you do enjoy today's video hit that like and subscribe button down below before we dive on into it I do want to mention that this channel and these videos are sponsored by the cryptocurrency technical analysis Academy If you guys want to learn everything you need to know about trading cryptocurrency markets check us out at the link in the description down below by the way, these videos, gauging the strength of the bulls and the bears, gauging the strength of support and resistance, and bull and bear markets have now been updated. Everyone who is in the course, you now have access to those. But without much further ado, guys, let's go ahead and dive right on into it. Guys, listen, if you don't have a cup of coffee, go get a cup of coffee. You're going to need it for today's video. I'm just saying it's impossible to be a good technical analyst without coffee lesson number one of today's video you gotta have caffeine because if you're gonna sit up and look at charts for 18 hours you're either gonna need caffeine or the energy of a two-year-old on crack i don't know what you're gonna do i would encourage you to try coffee because it's much less addictive than crack sure onto the chart Either way, guys, as we can see, Bitcoin did break bearish out of this consolidation pattern that we were talking about a little over a week ago. We came down to this uptrending level of support, and funnily enough, we bounced off of it. As you guys in the Academy will know, Bitcoin has a tendency to break levels of resistance that it tests multiple times. Well, it just so happens that we're rallying back up right now to test that level of resistance, that long-term downtrending level of resistance, again. So the question is, if Bitcoin is going to test it once, twice, three times, four times, five times, however many times we've tested this, because honestly, there's different ways to count it, are we going to break it? Because, you know, if you test a level of resistance once or twice, it's not necessarily guaranteed that you're going to break it. But you start testing it four or more times, you start wondering, why are we still testing this? Why are we still testing this? Why are we still testing this? What is the strength of the bulls? And are they actually stronger than the bears? Are they actually stronger than the resistance level? Let's find out. Well, guys, we've discussed bullish and bearish technicals in the last few days. And I'll be honest with you, a lot of them are contradicting each other. This is something I want you to understand. Technical indicators can contradict each other. Let's say there are maybe 20 technical indicators in all of technical analysis. And there's only 20 that matter. And they are just the be all and end all of technical analysis. Nothing else affects the chart. No mass psychology, no psycho market analysis, no fundamental analysis, no YouTube fundamental indicator. None of that. We only have 20 indicators. Here's what you're going to find in those 20 indicators. You are never going to find all 20 of them agreeing. You will never see every single technical indicator saying bearish or every single technical indicator saying bullish. It's kind of similar to the United States Congress. I was just watching a video on the Second World War because I find the Second World War fascinating. The day after Pearl Harbor, America declared war on Japan. And even after Pearl Harbor, one person still voted not to declare war on Japan. It was almost a unanimous vote, but there's one person who decided to vote no. Whatever the reasoning is, doesn't matter. The point is, you're never going to get all of Congress to agree that the sky is blue, and you're never going to get all technical indicators to agree that Bitcoin is bullish or bearish. And that's a really important piece of wisdom that you guys need to understand about markets, is that you're never going to get everything lined up perfectly. That is why you are here. That is why trading bots exist. That is why all of the other analysis and all of these lessons that we talk about are important, because you need to be able to decipher which side of this argument is right. Are the bulls correct? Are the bears correct? Are neither of them correct? Is Bitcoin about to trade sideways and ignore both of them? So with that in mind, let's look at the technical indicators right now. First of all, we've seen a golden cross on Bitcoin, and we did have a short downtrend to follow after that. From there, Bitcoin has managed to bounce off of our uptrending level of support. Shorts are down, longs are down. That means that overall open interest on Bitfinex anyway is down, which is a major exchange and more than likely reflective of the rest of the market. That's not a bullish thing, but if we look at the RSI and the MACD, what do we see? Well, the RSI is trending to the upside. That is a bullish trend on the RSI. Of course, we're going to see it trending to the upside if the last two candlesticks have been as green as they are. Furthermore, we can see that the MACD down here on the daily chart is actually converging bullish on itself over the last 48 hours now. And by the direction and the speed and the velocity and all of that on this MACD cross, uh, we would probably be expecting a cross in the next three to four days if Bitcoin maintains even half of the uptrend velocity that it has right now. 
TD Sequential has switched from red to green, which is an indicator of a trend reversal. You guys may not realize this because I don't talk about it much on TD Sequential. TD Sequential is actually not only useful for seeing when trends are overextended and they need to come to an end, it's also useful for telling when the trend itself has actually ended. As you can see, we went from red arrows on the bottom of TD Sequential to green arrows on the top, indicating that this indicator believes that we are now in an uptrend, which I think we as human traders and analysts can agree on uh, that we are. One thing also to take into consideration is that the upper band of the Bollinger Bands is riding this level of resistance almost perfectly. As Bitcoin trends to the upside here, that 20 simple moving average in the middle is going to trend to the upside as well, allowing for the Bollinger Bands extreme to rally farther away from this downtrend of resistance than it was on the previous test. That's a little bit technical, but I hope you understood what I was saying there. Another thing to mention on Bollinger Bands is that we did bounce off of the bottom band right there. Taking a look at the 20 EMA also, guys, check this out. We fell below the 20 EMA, and what did we do? We got back up above it, and this little candle wick right there bounced off of it. That's exactly the same level. $9,110 is the bottom of today's lowest shadow, and it's also exactly where that 20 DEMA is sitting. Looking out to the weekly chart, we're also going to find that Bitcoin retains its stance above the 50 WSMA, the 20 WEMA, and obviously the 200 WSMA. RSI is still trending to the upside. We're sitting around 57. Very healthy and bullish territory. And the MACD, now that we've had a green weekly candle body, is now in divergence again. It was already bullish, but now we're in bullish divergence rather than bearish convergence as we were on this candle wick and candle histogram bar right there. So you see what I'm trying to get at earlier on in this video when I said that technical indicators can differ. Some of the things I just covered are bullish. Some of the things I just covered are bearish. Open interest is down, but of course it's going to be down because it's a much shorter term indicator. You're going to see shorts and longs go down very quickly in the same way that you can watch the stock market on a one minute chart, but you can't watch the chart of the real estate market, for example. Real estate, you have to wait maybe 60 days to get data about foreclosures, forbearance, about sales, about inventory on the market and open houses and showings on the market. It's a much slower lagging indicator and a much slower lagging market than you're going to see in the stock market. Same thing's true with this. Some of these indicators I showed you are longer term indicators and the ones that we talked about that are bearish are more shorter term indicators. That's why you can be bullish on the short term or bearish on the short term and the opposite on a slightly longer term. Bitcoin might be bearish on the one minute chart, bullish on the 15 minute chart, bearish on the hourly chart and bullish on the weekly chart. That happens and it's probably happening right now to a certain extent. So the point I'm making here is if you go back through all of the technical indicators I just covered, Many of the bearish ones are bearish for the short term. Let me define our terms because short term can mean whatever you want it to mean. Short term is the next 168 hours. That's seven days. Many of the technical indicators that are bullish are bullish on the longer term. Now, there's two things you can read into that about. You can read either one, the downtrend that we just started is going to continue and it hasn't been going on long enough to readjust those longer term bullish technicals that are pointing to the upside. That's a fair argument. I don't think it's the correct one. I think what it means is that we were having a short-term correction down to the uptrending level of support, and now we're rallying back up to $10,000 and our downtrending level of resistance that we've been under since $20,000. And long-term bullish indicators like the ones we're seeing out here on the weekly chart with the RSI and the MACD and our different moving averages, along with some of the bullish things we're seeing on the daily chart, such as being above the 20 DEMA and the bullish golden cross that we're going to see on the MACD in the next few days, indicate that while we were in a short-term downtrend, perhaps the volume is going to rally us back up to the resistance and we'll have a chance of breaking it. So while Bitcoin might look a little all over the place right now, you expect that in a sideways trading market. Where was Bitcoin trading 30 days ago? Where is Bitcoin trading today? It's almost exactly the same number. Bitcoin is trading sideways. So of course you're going to see indicators flip-flopping and not being able to agree on what's going on in the market. The simple fact of the matter is, however, that Bitcoin is rallying back to the downtrend of resistance and that is what we need to be discussing. Bitcoin looks very bullish over the last 48 hours. You can tell that these two green candlesticks seem to have the same amount of exuberance as the seven that brought us down here in the first place. So it seems to me that Bitcoin is going to rally up to this downtrending level of resistance at $9,700, and from there we're going to be deciding if we'll break bullish or bearish. And based on everything we've said in this video, you might think, okay, Bitcoin's going to break bullish because we've tested it so many times. We're seeing a bullish cross on the MACD. We're seeing a golden cross on the 250 about a week ago. We're seeing the MACD and the RSI looking healthy on the weekly chart. You might think that it's an obvious case that Bitcoin's going to break bullish here, but it's just not. You see, what I've found in my experience is that unless you have at least like 75% of your indicators all agreeing on something, on top of that, the cycle market analysis and the fundamental analysis agree with those two. Unless you have that kind of level of agreeance and the traders are on board and it's obvious that they're on board and there's no like hidden agenda going on or you don't think the whales are going to do something, there's nothing that's going to come and wreck your parade. That's when you can believe in those indicators. But until then, you need to take it with a grain of salt. There's two points in this video. Number one, the market is much more complicated than you think it is. I don't care how complicated you think it is. I guarantee you it's more complex than you think. 
And number two, because of that complexity, you can never be as certain of your position or your trade as you think you can. And because of that, it is best, in my opinion, not a financial advisor, please don't sue me. I'd be very appreciative if you didn't do that. It is generally the best idea to trade with a backup plan. It is generally best to trade with the idea of if crap hits the fan, what am I going to do about it? Stop losses are where these come into play. So the technical analysis tells me this. The technical analysis right now seems to be that Bitcoin is going to rally to this downturn of resistance. Do I personally see the volume and the volatility and the retail investor interest and everything to break it? Honestly, no, because we saw that back over here and we didn't. I honestly will tell you my opinion. I don't think we're going to break this if we test it unless something changes. If something changes, I'll tell you. But with what we see right now, I don't see us breaking it. But that doesn't mean I just enter a short position right here at $9,800 and risk Bitcoin breaking to the upside with no stop loss. You want to use a stop loss up here and make sure you're being safe. And also, not only that, you want to have a plan for if that stop loss gets triggered, what do you do? Maybe 1% later, you enter a long so that you make up for the money you lost in the stop loss and you still have a profitable trade. Guys, at the end of the day, predicting the market doesn't matter. You want to be proactive in your trades if at all possible, but if you need to be, there's not much wrong with being a reactive trader as well. If you're witnessing a breakout and you're 15 minutes into a breakout that's showing up on the daily chart, might be a good idea to enter a long position and be reactive after you know what the market's going to do. Sometimes trying to read that crystal ball, trying to see into the future and have the power of a god to see what's going to happen, sometimes that's what's going to screw you. Sometimes it's better to utilize the technical analysis to get some general idea of where it's going to go, place a bet, be careful in case it doesn't come to fruition, and then be ready for whatever happens. That has always served me much better than making a trade, locking it in, and then walking away, and then if I make money, I make money. If I don't, I don't. You're going to be wrong. It's a simple fact. You are going to be wrong. The best analysts in the world are going to be wrong. And look, guys, let me tell you something. You're not going to become an amazing trader by making your profitable trades more numerous and more profitable. You're going to become a profitable trader by minimizing the amount of money you lose when you do lose. If you make 50 green trades and 50 red trades, but every time you make a green trade, you make $10. But every time you make a red trade, you lose $1. You're going to be in profit. That's one of the things we talk about in risk and reward and a game of statistics and probabilities in the CT2A. So guys, this video, the, the point really isn't me trying to tell you where I think the market's going to go. I'll tell you all I'm going to make a call on right now. I think it's going to go to the downtrend of resistance. Distance. Is it going to break it? We'll have a better understanding of that when we get to it. What's more important than me clickbaiting you and saying, oh my gosh, are we going to break the downtrend of resistance? What's more important than that? And the reason I'm really making this video is because I want you to understand that gets clicks. I'm playing the game. I'm a YouTuber. It's how it works. I'm sorry, but I mean, go, go at YouTube, not me. It gets clicks to say, oh my gosh, are we going to break this massive level of resistance? But what really matters is are you a competent enough trader to profit when it does. Because there are many times when Bitcoin will make a movement that seemed obvious in hindsight, but if you didn't know what you were doing before the breakout happened, even if after it you're like, oh yeah, I called that, did you actually? And were you actually in a position to trade it? I'll tell you something. For the last year, everybody's been saying, oh, if Bitcoin ever goes back below $6,000, I'm going to buy all the Bitcoin. I'm going to be a Bitcoin maximalist. I'm going to buy 20 million Bitcoin, even though there aren't 20 million in existence. I'm going to buy all of it. And then Bitcoin went to $4,000. And how many of them actually bought? A lot of them were talking crap and they didn't back it up with nothing. I'm encouraging you guys to focus on learning the markets and becoming educated in the markets and becoming wise in the markets because it's a lot more complicated than some people will lead you to believe on YouTube. Guys, at the end of the day, the point of this channel is to help you guys as much as possible. I love reading comments from you guys when I see you making money or I see you profiting or I see it's the ones I really love are when you guys are saying, I lifted myself up out of poverty. That really, like... Yeah, you can't see that in the camera. My, my, my arm hairs are standing on end talking about this. It makes me so excited to read those stories of people that have been able to help themselves from learning technical analysis. I have seen cryptocurrency change so many people's lives, and it started with it changing mine. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, wow, I'm not alone. Crypto changed my life, but it changed so many other people's lives also. And that's really spectacular. And, you know, that's what I want to do with this channel is to teach you guys crypto, teach you guys to trade, teach you guys to invest, teach you guys to make money. Because I'll be honest with you, money, we've talked about this in videos before, money won't make you happy. But believe me, money will get rid of a lot of things that make you unhappy, which is kind of the same thing, isn't it? Anyway, guys, I went and toured the office that we're looking at leasing yesterday, and I think it's going to work out. I think I'm going to put in an offer on it. But ever since I toured it, it's got me thinking about what we're going to end up doing with this company, because a lot of you guys may not realize this. We're getting the office. Some people misunderstood this in the comment section yesterday. We're not just getting a big office space so that I can change the background. We're getting an office space because I'm talking about hiring probably up to 10 employees in the next 18 months to build out the background team on this channel, a new channel that we're building, and a digital marketing agency that I'm starting. I'm not getting a new office just to get a fancy view. Don't get me wrong, it's got a nice view. But I've been thinking 
so much about what we're going to do. And guys, it's just got me really excited for 2020. Like I said in yesterday's video, there have been a lot of things that have happened this year. And they've sucked. They've been bad. Don't get me wrong. It's been a hard year on all of us. I know that this nonsense that's been going on has affected all of us in one way or another. And many of the ways that it's affected us have not been good. But something I want to remind you guys of is a philosophy that I maintain. And that is this. If you can turn enough bad days into good days, you can turn a bad life into a good life. Let me elaborate on that. If you can turn a red day in crypto into a green day for profit, if you can turn a bad day where something horrible happened to you into something good because you learned a valuable lesson from it that'll grow you as a person and prevent it from happening in the future and also help you in your business endeavors or in your family life, if you can turn a bad breakup into an understanding of people and relationship and then you find a love of psychology and reading people that will help you in business or in your charity or in the church or in your family or wherever, if you can turn enough bad experiences into good experiences... Like I said, you can turn a bad life into a good life. I am living proof of that, guys. Not saying that I had a bad life before. I've been very blessed to even be born on this planet. But I am saying that if you can turn enough mediocre days into halfway decent days even, you can make a massive change. And thinking about this office has just humbled the living hell out of me. Because I'll be honest with you guys, I never expected three years ago, under three years ago when we started this YouTube channel, that I'd be looking at 1,580 square feet of office space on the fourth floor of an office building in downtown. I never thought that I'd be doing that. I never thought that I'd have a business and employees and all kinds of things that go along with that. I never thought that we'd have 40,000 subscribers. I always wanted it to happen, but I never expected it to. It's humility and gratitude and grace and generosity that gets you to those places in the first place. Because believe me, a lot of people say, oh, the rich are greedy. They're not, it's not that they're greedy for money. They're greedy for the thing that they dream about. Name me a billionaire that got to being a billionaire status, pulled themselves up from a middle-class lifestyle just because they want a billion dollars. You're not going to find it. They did that because they had a vision. That's why successful people are called visionaries. If you want to make a change in your life, have a vision about where you're going to go. Turn enough of those bad days into good days, and you can turn your bad or even normal life into something spectacular following your vision. To add to the point of what I just said, what's the vision of Elon Musk? What's the vision of Jeff Bezos? What's the vision of uh, Steve Jobs? Steve Jobs died owning like 0.4% of Apple stock. He wasn't doing it to become a billionaire. Most billionaires don't do it to become billionaires. They do it because they have a dream about what their company will do and how it will revolutionize their industry and the world. So I guess what I'm saying here, guys, is stay humble and never forget where you came from because there are plenty of lessons in your past. The bad can always be turned into the good if you mix it to be that way in your head. And I'm also saying that if you want to change your life, you got to do something. Like I posted on Twitter the other day, if you want something you never had, you got to do something you never did. If you want to be successful at trading cryptocurrency and you haven't ever been successful at trading cryptocurrency, clearly you need to make a change. What's the definition of insanity that people always quote Einstein as saying? I don't think he was the one that said that, but everyone quotes him as saying it. Guys, I'm really excited about where this year is going. I'm already thinking about how we're going to change our industry and how we're going to help people in our city and how we'll expand to help a lot of people in the entire world. Because guys, what we're building, it's not about money. It's about changing people's lives. It's about helping people. It's about making sure that we can help the people that are in the situations that a lot of the bad people that I know were in. People with a bad life that I know were in. And guys, all of that is why we created the Bitcoin Academy and the Cryptocurrency Technical Analysis Academy. We made this course because I want to teach you guys how to trade and invest and profit in cryptocurrency markets so you can do good things for yourself. Because like I said earlier, money won't make you happy. But it will definitely get rid of a lot of the things that make you unhappy. It really kind of upsets me when people say, oh, money won't make you happy, and they have no context for that because they grew up with a $250,000 a year income, and they don't understand what it's like to be broke. I understand what it's like to be broke. You don't want to be broke. You understand? It's not good. If you want to learn how to trade cryptocurrency so that you can use the money that you will make in cryptocurrency to make your life, your family's life, your community's life, your church's life, your friend's life, your community's life, everyone's life better... I encourage you to check us out at the link in the description down below. Everything in the world is not about money, but money does rule a lot of the things in the world, if that makes sense. Guys, cryptocurrency technical analysis is something that is very difficult to teach yourself. I spent two years trying to do it. I'm learning stuff every single day, becoming a better analyst every single day. It's a never-ending journey, but the first year, that initial learning curve, it is steep as a cliff, guys. And if you need some help learning how to do technical analysis, if you need some help learning how to trade and profit in these markets so you can actually manifest some of these wild profit figures that you're seeing from some of our fellow traders... I can help you. That's why we built CT2A. I went into this space, started the YouTube channel, and about eight months into the channel, I was like, you know, technical analysis is hard to learn. I bet we can help some people if we start teaching them. And that's exactly what we've done. There are over 1,600 students that have gone through the academy now, and they're loving every minute of it, guys. Listen, I'm going to be straight up with you. If you want to learn technical analysis, CT2A is the place to do it. You can join our free Discord server down below and talk to some of our students and see what they have to say. I'm really excited about what this year brings, but let me tell you something, guys. 
a lot of times the only way that you're going to get excited about the future is by working today so that you can secure that excitement for the future. If I hadn't put in the work that I put into this channel and learning cryptocurrency and trading and investing and building this course and building this company and, t and teaching people things, if I hadn't have done all the work that I've done, I wouldn't have earned the right to be excited about the next six months despite everything that's going on in the world. You got to earn people's respect. You got to earn excitement. And if you want to earn, you got to learn how to earn. And that's what CT2A is here to do. Check that out, man. Mm, that was good. That was good. I'm going to use that again. Hmm, I'm getting good at this. Some of you guys in the comment section ask me sometimes if I'm a rapper. Um, no, I'm not. <laughs> I've got a se I've got a secret nightlife, and it's uh, no, no, for real though. I got a secret nightlife. I go to the clubs around town and I rap. Yeah, no, that's that's totally me. I'm I'm the dude up on stage wearing the mask and like the, yeah, that's me. I got like the I got like the voice scrambler on there. Yeah, party monster. That's me. Totally sure. Anyway, guys, I think I've ranted enough in today's video. I hope you guys did get some good value out of today's video. If you did, as always, consider hitting that like and subscribe button down below. It does help out the channel when you do that. But for now, though, guys, that is going to wrap it out for today. Before I go, though, I do just first want to thank each and every single last one of you for watching, as always. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace. Oh, I got a real good